Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Brittany, and if this is your first time stumbling across one of my videos, I focus on fashion, beauty, luxury, lifestyle, fragrances, hair, um, and whatever else I feel like talking about, to be honest. So if that seems like something that you may be interested in, please think about clicking on that subscribe button if you enjoy the content, of course. Also, if you're already a subscriber, go ahead and click on that notification bell. I upload twice a week, Tuesdays and Thursdays, and sometimes I'll put out a bonus video for you guys on Sunday, so I don't want you to miss any of them. So for today's video, I have something a little bit different. I've been asked this question probably for the last two or three years luxury purchases that I regret and for me that is a really hard thing okay that's a hard concept for me because I love to purchase luxury items I love trendy items and things like that and even if something like goes out of style a lot of the times I purchase things that you know it goes with my style so um, I don't have a problem with wearing those things after the trend is done and even if the trend is done like it's still a moment for me and I enjoyed that piece while I had it so it's really never a regret but after cleaning out my closet and getting some things together in the house I have found a few things that I actually do regret um, and I'll give you guys the reasons behind them it's not like I just bought them don't like it anymore or something like that there's actual reasons as to why I regret each one of these purchases so um, if you guys are interested in this then stick around so I'm gonna start with jewelry and the first jewelry item is a Chanel piece shocking there's actually a couple of Chanel items in this video which is shocking but the first regret are these dog tag earrings and these are them let me show you guys with the black background so you can really get a feel for how they look okay so it's kind of hard to see them because I'm holding them up but I'm gonna put a picture up here as well but these are the Chanel dog tag earrings with the large pearl detailing um, and they are gorgeous I've probably worn these about two to three times at most um, I love these earrings so let's talk about why I purchased these so I purchased these earrings because I was on the hunt for the double C Paris uh, gold button earrings that everyone had and they were super hard to get your hands on so I kind of gave up on those earrings and when I saw these I was like oh I love these too they're kind of edgy with the dog tag um, they have the Chanel 31 Rue Cambone Paris on there and I just thought they were really cute so I purchased these online um, through a reseller and you guys these earrings are gorgeous I actually have the dog tag necklace as well I bought the dog tag necklace at the um, Chanel boutique in Chicago and I honestly didn't think that I would like love that necklace as much as I do but I wear that necklace a lot surprisingly even though it's like a lot going on I love that necklace and when I picked these up they weren't super expensive either so that's one thing that I did like on fashion style I think these were going for like $7.95 um, and I think the retail was maybe like six something and the original pair of earrings that I wanted were the same you know same amount but they were reselling for around eighteen hundred dollars and still are so I picked these up and I love them they are so heavy though you guys these earrings are very heavy in your ear they pull and tug on your ear and I think it is the um, pearl detailing because the double C's I can feel them like more than my Louis hoops but I don't feel them like tugging and pulling down on my ears so yeah the only reason I regret these is because they are really heavy in my ear and I just don't reach for them as much and now that I have the Paris button earrings that I really wanted I definitely don't reach for these as much so I've been thinking about selling these but I do feel like these are a nice classic pair of earrings that can stand the test of time you know Chanel earrings are known for you know pearl detailing and things like that and I like the fact that these have a little bit of edge because they are the dog tag but I do have the dog tag necklace too so you know I was like I don't know if I really need both um, but being that I didn't pay like a lot of money for these like over retail I'm like I probably should keep them so I've been going back and forth if I want to sell um, these dog tag earrings but they are absolutely gorgeous in the ear they just hurt you guys they're just annoying to wear I'll say that they don't hurt they're just annoying to wear like I can feel them 
pulling down on my ears. And after a while, I just feel like I want to take them out. So, you know, it's just not a fun piece to wear, but they're gorgeous. And I do feel like I still get the same kind of vibe when I throw on the dog tag necklace. It's like that chic, but like edgy kind of style because you can just like wrap the dog tag necklace around your neck. Love that. So yeah, these are a regret, unfortunately, but they're still gorgeous. Okay, next up, I have another pair of earrings and these are by Y Project. Now I was on the hunt for these earrings for quite some time and I finally found them not too long ago, actually. And let me pull them out of the plastic for you guys. I'm also going to uh, put a picture up some Somewhere so you can see them. Okay, y'all. So here are the earrings. I'm not sure if you can see these on camera, but these are the Y Project hoops. And these hoops are huge. So gorgeous. I mean, I love these, you guys. Very much so a statement piece. I would only wear these hoops with my hair like pulled up or pulled back in a ponytail or something. But I'm short, I have a short neck, and they just kind of like rub against my shoulder, and that's so annoying. These are also quite heavy in my opinion, um, but they're gorgeous earrings, and I just love how edgy they are. It's kind of like an ode to like the early 90s, but elevated in a way, and they're just, they're everything, but yeah I have not worn these yet and I've had them for about a month I'm actually selling these over on my Instagram page shop pockets and bows so if you guys are interested in these Y project hoops definitely check out my page but I do like them a lot I wish like if my neck was a little bit longer I think I would definitely keep these because it's a statement it's a vibe but I haven't reached for them yet and I've been wearing my hair pulled back for a little minute and I still haven't like worn them. So I tried them on. I wore them around the house maybe for about 30 minutes and I definitely felt the weight. Um, they're not as heavy as the Chanel earrings, but you can definitely feel these. But just all this moving around like on my um, shoulder and stuff like that, they're just really cumbersome, okay, on my neck and face area so gorgeous gorgeous but yeah they're just they're they just didn't work out for me so i do kind of regret purchasing these because i have been wanting them for so long and when i finally got them it was kind of like a letdown you know um so yeah why project hoops it's a regret Okay, so next up, I have a few pair of shoes. And you guys know I am a shoe girl, a heel girl at that. So I love my shoes, okay? So this pair here is a regret. And it's uh, it hurts my heart to say, and I've had these for years. These are the Sophia Webster Boss Lady Pumps. Uh, y'all know I'm a pump girl. And this heel isn't even too high, y'all. Like, do you see this? So I ordered these, okay? I ordered these when Sophia Webster was having a sale on her website, again, years ago. And these were final sale. I think they were marked down to like 180 or so, something crazy. This was the last pair. And they said that they are true to size. So I got a size 37 and a half. Guys, these run small in my opinion. I have never worn these. You can see the bottom is clean as a whistle. I've tried wearing them around the house and... I think because these are like such a hot commodity, or they were at the time, I really didn't want to wear them out to really test the waters um, because I was like, I could always sell these, but these are just like cute little trophy shoes. Granted, I think I'm past the stage of like having them on display, but they're gorgeous like display shoes. And if you are like a super girly girl and you have an office, these are perfect for like your office. You can have like boss lady in there. Um, I love these shoes so much. They are my actual size, 37 and a half, but they just run small, y'all. I definitely need a 38 in these because it's just, no, it's a no. Um, but the shoe itself is so fun, so whimsical. You can see this one says Boss, and it's kind of like the pop art with the soft pink patent leather. And then it even has like a hot pink heel. And this one says Lady, so cute. So I love these shoes so much. So um, if you guys are interested, I may put these on the site. I've had them for so long that I've never even thought about really selling them like that um, in you know recent years. But if you guys are interested and you wear a 37 and a half or maybe even a 37, then let me know and I will post these on Shop Pockets and Bows on Instagram. But 
These are such a cute, adorable pair of shoes, and I just hate that I haven't been able to wear these. Granted, these are not like a hot commodity right now, but I would still throw these on in a heartbeat with some jeans and a white tee or, I mean, so many things, to be honest, because this is just the pop right here. Love these but it's a regret because I can't wear them. Okay, so this next pair of shoes, I really hate to include these in my regrets because I didn't purchase these. I actually received these um, as a gift from my mom and these are a pair of Chanel shoes. I wonder if you guys can guess. I've had these four years, probably have worn them three times, okay? Maybe four. And these are the classic Chanel espadrilles in the black lambskin, okay? So my mom picked these up for me and at the time of course I was like oh my gosh Chanel shoes these were my first pair of Chanel shoes um and these were super popular I want to say what around 2015 2016 and honestly this an espadrille like this has just never been my vibe you know and at the time none of the Chanel shoes were my style at all but I've always been obsessed with Chanel even since I was like a little girl so my mom picked these up because of course they're Chanel and they were super popular and it's a classic shoe people still wear these to this day um, they still sell these to this day um, like I said it's a classic so it's not a bad purchase or anything they're very comfortable wearable um, you can wear them so many different places they're just not my thing so I don't gravitate towards these I did used to throw these on every now and then going into the office like on a casual Friday and maybe if I was going into the office now I would put these on with maybe like a pair of jeans a blazer t-shirt you know casual Friday um, but you know this is just not really my vibe you guys have never seen me in shoes like this before so it's just that it's not my vibe the shoes are very classic comfortable extremely well made and girl they're Chanel but not everything that Chanel or designer you know is is gonna work for you so these I haven't worn a lot at all they still look brand new in my opinion they are lambskin so of course the leather is very soft but yeah um, I don't really want to sell these my mom told me that I should and I could but because they were a gift I just hate to sell things that you know has been given to me so yeah Chanel um, lambskin espadrilles not my vibe so it's kind of a regret but I didn't purchase them so you know how it is okay so the next pair of shoes are definitely a regret for so many reasons y'all and it hurts me okay these are the Louis Vuitton Archlight sneakers I wanted these shoes for a while now looking at these sneakers I knew these really weren't me like that they were definitely trendy and I liked them past like the the highlight of the trend right I purchased these maybe last year so not long at all and again I still like them even though they were kind of dying off the trend I felt like it was safe to purchase these so I purchased these at the Louis Vuitton store here in Nashville and y'all I just cannot like I love the style I would actually wear these with what I have on today just to make it real casual but y'all these shoes hurt my feet so bad and it's so crazy because I'm not even like a huge sneaker wearer right so I've gone through a couple different sneakers I had um, the Balenciaga triple S sneakers that I love they were too big though so I ended up selling those and then I had another pair of Louis uh, sneakers that I sold um, I have a pair of Alexander McQueen's that I never wear. They hurt to regret. I don't know where those are though, so I didn't bring them. And then these, like it's a no for me. The shoe is just so uncomfortable. So right now I am selling these on Shop Pockets and Bows on my Instagram. Um, I've only worn these like maybe five times. So yeah, I'm definitely selling these for a little bit of a discount, but they're still really nice shoes in my opinion. I think they make a statement and they're just cool, you know? It's a cool shoe. I love these, especially for the winter time, um, but I just can't. So if you guys know how to make these more comfortable, I don't mind keeping them, but I cannot, okay? I cannot. And with socks on, it just makes it feel, it feels like my feet are suffocating in these. So since I have found my perfect uh, designer sneaker, which are Chanel sneakers, the most comfortable sneakers on the face of the earth when it comes to designer sneakers, in my opinion. So if I get any more, it's gonna be that route. 
these I know okay and they're kind of heavy but they're not overly heavy right so they are not as heavy as the triple s but I think they're cute it's just no I couldn't I cannot do these and these are a size 37 and a half as well okay so I have one more pair of shoes that I regret purchasing and y'all these I have never even worn these I actually hauled these like a couple months ago and you're probably gonna be shocked but not really because it's like you know it is what it is so these are the Prada Kitten Heels, okay? I only wore these one time in a video and styled them up, but they still have the paper in them, y'all, stickers on the back and everything. And the only reason I regret these, so first of all, I wanted these originally in the black and the white, right? So when I was in Mexico, I found the white pair, but they didn't have the black and white pair. So I tried on the white pair, fell in love with them, still love them, I wear them now. So when I found the pink ones, I found these on Italis and they were discounted a little bit. So I was like, oh, I love this pink color. I'm going to grab these. Now these are made a little bit different than the white pair that I have. Now the reason why these are a regret is because, I don't know if you guys can see this, the sling back starts on the inside of the shoe. Okay, so it's a sporty sling back. Love the shape. I mean, I'm not a kitten heel girl like that. But these are so sporty and cool. I just think they're so cool. But anyway, the sling back is on the inside of the shoe. Y'all, you can feel every bit of this. Well, I can when I walk. I, I, if I'm going to wear a kitten heel, it needs to be something, girl, I can play basketball in at this point. You know what I'm saying? So I cannot. If it's going to be this low and I'm going to feel any type of discomfort, I can't do it. But for some reason, I thought that they would feel just the same as the white ones. I, you know, I wasn't thinking or I didn't pay attention, I guess, too much. Um, but when I got these in the mail, yeah, no. And when it comes to purchases like from the Italist, though they do have a return policy, anytime I purchase things that are overseas, um, I treat it as like a final sale because it's just too much of a hassle to send things back when it comes to uh, taxes, duties, customs, all of that. So I'm just here with the shoes. I haven't even posted these for sale yet, but if you guys are interested, I would definitely post these. These are a 37 and a half and they do run true to size. It's not about the sizing. The shoe itself is comfortable. It's just that I can feel where this, the sling back, you know, is inserted into the sole of the shoe. And I just cannot do that. I can't do it. So brand new pair of Pradas and girl, I haven't worn them. So I absolutely regret purchasing these. Um, but I'm happy that I have the white pair that I have. They're made just a little bit different. Okay, so the last couple of items that I have are two handbags that I actually regret purchasing. And I have other handbags that I have regretted maybe, or just kind of like, I felt like I was over the bags and I've sold those, like it'll be a Gucci bag or something like that. But these bags, it's like, it's, it's you know, I'm going back and forth. So the first bag is this one. You guys probably never see me carry this because I don't carry this. I probably carried this for about three months straight when I first got this. Now, the reason why it's hard for me to let go of this bag, which is the Louis Vuitton Pochette Matisse. So, um, of course, this bag was super popular a few years ago. I was put on the list for this bag and I'm not going to lie to you, by the time the bag came in, I was a little bit over it. But when I tried it on, it was so practical. Still now, holding this bag, it's just the most practical bag. And it's, to me, it's definitely a classic bag. And maybe in a few years, I'll appreciate this bag. But because this became like, it, it became like the soccer mom bag, it's like, I just can't with it. You know, I love the bag. I think it's a nice bag, but I don't reach for it because it's just, I don't know. It just feels so not the vibe. You know what I mean? Every time I get dressed and I'm going for a bag to, you know, reaching for a bag, I'm thinking of the vibe and it's never this, right? But this bag is still nice. I love how practical it is. It opens super easily. It has several compartments. You can see I did use it a while ago. I have some lotion in here. Ooh. This is my old L'Occitane um, lip balm. Need that. I wonder if I have some money in here. But anyway, yeah, so this is the Pochette Matisse. Gorgeous bag. 
I mean, it's one of those everyday bags. It's very durable. I love the fact that it is top handle. It also comes with this gorgeous strap that is monogrammed as well. And it's adjustable so you can wear it crossbody. You can wear it over your shoulder. So many different options, right? And you even have the little zipper on the back here. So this is a beautiful bag. And I do feel like this will be a nice vintage piece in the years to come. So that's why I haven't gotten rid of this bag. And I waited forever for this bag but yeah it's just never the vibe you know it's just never the vibe and when I did carry this I was carrying it to work and that's when I realized like how practical this bag was so it is a gorgeous bag I love the bag and it has patina well like you may not be able to tell but it has a beautiful um, patina on this so it's a gorgeous bag I think I am just going to keep it because it just reminds me of something that's going to be a nice vintage piece um, to pass down to somebody or even to keep for myself because it has like that briefcase feel. Um, but it's, you know, pliable. It's just it's a beautiful bag. I just don't. I don't reach for it. So at the time, I probably should have just said no thank you when it finally came in. But when it did, it was like, you know, I had been awaiting. I had been waiting for this bag for so long that it was hard for me to turn it down. So of course I went ahead and purchased it. But yeah, gorgeous bag. It's just not a bag that I reach for a lot. And for that, I do regret because this was one of the most expensive bags at the time. Well, not the most. I mean, when it comes to the canvas, it was. So I think this was like 1980 or 2000 something. It may have had a price increase while I was waiting. Can't remember. But yeah, Pochette Matisse, I, I never reached for it. Okay, y'all. So last but not least, I have a Chanel bag that is slightly a regret. And it is my Chanel 19, the jersey. Okay. I... I love this bag. This was my first 19. When the 19s first came out, I went back and forth about, do I love the bag? Do I hate the bag? Um, and then I knew that I wanted something a little bit more structured, all the things. So when I saw the jersey in person, you guys, um, I had vlogged trying on the jersey bag, but they had a huge one. I think it was a maxi or something, and it was red. But I found that the jersey had a little bit more structure than the leather, which was odd to me. So I was like, oh, this seems fun and new. You know, it was fresh. It was a fresh bag at the time. And jersey, I was like, I don't have any jersey bags. This color was super pretty for spring. So I grabbed it. But the first day that I wore this, I got a little bit of a stain on this. And ever since then, I have just been so scared to wear the bag, like so scared. So I absolutely love the color of this bag. The small size to me is the perfect size when it comes to the Chanel 19s, especially for me because I love a top handle. I like a crossbody. I like a shoulder bag. It does all the things that I need it to do. Um, it's just the fact that this is jersey and, you know, you can't wear it in the rain. I mean, any little precipitation that gets on this, you know, it's going to be like a water stain, in my opinion. Um, I don't know what touched this bag, but it's a very small stain on it. You really can't tell. It's like right there. But the bag is absolutely adorable. I have made a vow to like pull this out more um, this summer. But yeah, this is a regret because I could, you know, for my first bag and for it to be a Chanel 19, these bags are so practical. Like they're easy going bags. You can grab and go every single day. And I wish that I was able to do that with this bag. Now, granted, I knew I was getting a Jersey bag, so I didn't plan on wearing, plan on wearing this every single day, but I definitely thought I'd be wearing it more than three times, you know? So yeah, I've probably only worn this bag maybe two or three times. It may be two times. So I took it on vacation with me one time and yeah, that was it. Okay. So yeah, this is the Chanel 19. I forget the color of this. I forget the name of this color, but yeah, gorgeous bag. I just, I never reached for it. So it's definitely a regret and this thing won cheap. All right, y'all. So that is the end of my luxury purchases that I regret buying. And y'all, it took a minute for me to like come up with this little list, but I feel like if it's something in my wardrobe that I love, but it's like, I can't wear it for whatever reason, or I don't reach for it, it becomes a regret at that point. But most of the time, things that I buy, even if it's in that moment, is never a regret because I just live for that moment. Like 
it brings me joy. You know what I'm saying? So it's fine. Um, but these items, it's like, I love them. I just can't use them like I want to. So it makes it a regret in my opinion. So yeah, um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it was fun for you guys. If you did enjoy it, please leave me a thumbs up. That'll help me out a lot. Again, thank you guys for bearing with me while I do these like sit down videos, um, you know, while I heal up. So thank you again. And I will try to link everything down below if I can find it, maybe like on the pre-love market. Also, I will put um, my little shopping Instagram page down below just in case you guys want to follow me over there. And, you know, I post some things that you may be interested in. So, yeah, thank you guys again so much for watching. And I will talk to you on my next one. Bye, y'all.